Hi, my name is Thor Jawan. My metric number is 196371. I'm currently studying Bachelor of Environmental Science and Technology under the Faculty of Forestry and Environment in UPM. Today, I'm going to talk about a topic in bioremediation. Ever heard of this phrase, no food without soil? If you want to have food, conserve the soil, please. Whenever humans step foot on, there will be pollution. Soil contamination or soil pollution is a part of land degradation caused by introduction of xenobiotic chemicals or alteration in the natural soil environment. Most of the pollutants are introduced into the environment by humans. Production of at the industrial waste, excessive use of pesticides or fertilizer, spillage of liquid hydrocarbon, and improper disposal of garbage are few of the reasons bring to soil pollution. There are various efforts invented to help elevate or eliminate soil pollution. One of the most famous methods is bioremediation. What is bioremediation? It is a process used to treat contaminated media, including water, soil, or subsurface material, by altering environmental conditions to stimulate growth of microorganisms and to degrade the target pollutants. There are different methods of bioremediation, which include bioventing, biosparging. Cell bio augmentation, gene bio augmentation, bio piling, bio farming, mineral composting, bio reactor, and bio filtration. Today, I'm going to talk about bio venting. Bio venting is one of the methods used in bio stimulation, which is an in situ bio remediation process. Bio venting is a process of stimulate stimulation of the natural in situ biodegradation of pollutants. In the soil by providing air or oxygen to the existing soil microorganism. It uses low flow, low pressure air and is generally focused on the vetus or unsaturated zone of soil. There are various native microbes that grow in the soil with the ability to degrade different types of pollutants over time. Examples of these aerobic microbes are Pseudomonas putida, Dechloromonas aromatica. Denococcus radiodurans, Mifilibium petrolifilium, Alcaniworex brocumenesis, and Phenorosia chrysosporium. These microbes that I mentioned above are the specific bacteria famous in participating in bioremediation. They use hydrocarbon as a source of uh, carbon and energy. These microbes that live in the soil might not have a proper and optimal condition to survive. And grow, especially due to the low aeration in the soil. Hence, by implementing bioventing to the unsaturated soil, low air flow rates provide enough oxygen to sustain microbial activity. This process enhances the biodegrading ability of these bacteria. You must be thinking, what kind of pollutants that causes soil pollution, or what kind of pollutants that bio that bacteria are able to biodegrade? There are various pollutants which bioventing able to help boosting the degradation activity of the native microorganisms. For example, petrochemical compounds such as gasoline, fuel oil, and butane. The constituents of these compounds are measured together as total petroleum hydrocarbons. Not only limited to petroleum hydrocarbons, bioventing has also been shown great outcome in reducing a subset of these compounds known as BTEX, which are benzene, toluene. Ethyl benzene and silence. BTEX are known as volatile organic compounds, which often found in petroleum products. So let me briefly explain the process of bio venting by using the model that I made here. It's actually a very very small, tiny model. It's a stimulating model for the bio venting process. So I use soil for planting for my mom. Soil and uh, I use. This star-shaped candy to represent soil microbe, and you can see that there's a, a lot of soil microbe in the soil, a lot of native aerobic microbes in the soil. And take a closer look. So this is the boxes that represent the factory. So there's a factory area where it will release pollutants to the soil, and these two are the bioventing settings. Uh, I'll explain it later. This is the soil gas monitoring, and this is the uh, blower or compressor for the bioventing process. Uh, I will explain it later. 
and so this is yeah my model here. So with our imaginations, I am going to talk about the details of my models here. So the soil type that I use is a silty soil. You can see it's actually not that moisture. Okay. And the depth of the contamination sites from the underground water is 5 feet, so I did not actually put water away here. So it's, uh, I want to make it a perfect uh, contamination site for bioventing. And the soil pH is 6.5, pH 6.5. Uh, moisture content of the soil is 55%, I don't want to set it too moisture. And the soil temperature is 28 degrees Celsius with a lot of background heterotrophic bacteria. So scientifically, we need to have more than thousands colony from a unit of per gram of the heterotrophic bacteria for bioventing to happen. So I put quite a lot of soil bacteria here to prove that uh, this contamination site has a lot of potential bacteria which can help in biodegrade the pollutants. And I use cooking oil as the pollutant. So I will going to pour cooking oil at the contamination site. So when when the pet, when the petroleum products or the pollutants are released from the industrial to the soil, it will either volatilize into atmosphere or sink to the ground, uh, and or it depends on the volatility and site conditions of the pollutant. So yeah, that's my model here. Before we decided to implement bioventing, there are a few steps to be done. This is to make sure that the contaminated sites are suitable to be bioremedied effectively by bioventing. Step 1. An initial screening of bioventing effectiveness. In this step, we determine the type of soil that we used that occurred in the contaminated area. Type of soil such as clay is actually not suitable for bioventing. So the type of soil the type of soil I use in my model here is uh, some things like silt sand, it's actually quite suitable for bioventing. So if the type of soil is suitable, we can proceed to step 2, a detailed evaluation of bioventing effectiveness. This step provides further screening criteria to confirm whether bioventing is likely to be effective. Specific soil properties such as soil pH, moisture content, soil temperature, depth to groundwater, and the product constituent characteristic in the corrective action plan will be identified. So, soil pH of the contaminated site should be in the range of 6 to 8. Moisture content of the soil should be between 40% to 85% of saturation. Soil temperature should be in between 10 degrees Celsius to 45 degrees Celsius. And the depth of the Veda zone of groundwater should be less than 3 feet. So, as I mentioned above, the soil condition that I use all of them are fulfilled the requirements of, uh, of using the bioventing as a bioremediate method. After evaluating all the properties, we can proceed to step 3, which is an evaluation of the bioventing system design. This will allow you to determine if the rationale for the design has been appropriately defined based on pilot study data or other studies whether the necessary design components have been specified, and whether the construction process flow designs are consistent with the standard practice. After all these evaluations, we can confirm that bioventing is a suitable and effective method for in-situ bioremediation for the certain contamination sites. So my model over here are made to, suit to be suitable for the bioventing, and the it's actually fulfill all the requirements of the value of the evaluations. So a typical bioventing setup is appealingly simple. We need a blower or a compressor that connected to one or more air supply valves. Uh, I use a paper straw to make uh, this blower or compressor 
So this we injected to the soil and supplied air to the soil to the soil microbes. And we also have a soil gas monitoring well. I use a wooden chopstick and a paper clip to make this uh, soil gas monitoring well. Soil gas monitoring well are installed to monitor the soil and gas to see whether the contamination sites are fully aerated. So this is actually to determine whether the bioventing method is effective or any other methods, uh, any other factors that are causing it to be less effective. There are two methods for bioventing, which are injections and extraction. Both methods have served the same purpose, which is forcing the air through the soil. We can choose the method depends on the location. Let me explain about injections and extraction of bioventing. Injection is said to be simpler and less expensive compared to the extraction. There is also no need for treatment of off gases for injection, while extraction requires the treatment of off gases. However, how do you choose between injection and extraction? It depends on the location of the contaminated sites. Injection favored at sites with low permeability soil with contaminant of low vapor pressure located deeply deep in the soil. Injection is safer when the contamination is distant from the structure or property boundaries. Meanwhile, extraction will only be considered while there is no way to avoid pushing hazardous vapors into building or property boundaries near the contaminants area. Also, injected air tends to push contaminant vapors outwards from the initial location. Even in less permeable clay soils, this will increase the biodegradation efficiency as it pushes the contaminants in contact with a large area of soil and consequently in contact with more microbes. On the other hand, extraction causes the water table to rise slightly, decreasing the volume of contaminated soil that can be efficiently treated. Why do I choose bioventing? Here are some benefits of using bioventing to degrade pollutants. First of all, bioventing is inexpensive. It does not require high technology or expensive equipment to carry out bioventing. It only requires air supply valves or a blower. Next, the equipment used are readily available and easy to install. Moreover, bioventing requires relatively short treatment time. It usually only takes 6 to 2 years for the treatments, provided that the soil condition is under optimal conditions. And also, bioventing does not alter the soil ecosystems because it only uses the native microorganisms that live in the soil instead of introducing new species of microorganisms. The whole concept of bioventing is stimulate the growth of the indigenous microorganisms to enhance the ability of degrading of microbes. However, there are also few limitations of bioventing. As I mentioned above, bioventing can only be used or shown effectiveness in specific contamination sites. Contamination sites which has low soil permeability, such as clay, is not suitable for bioventing. Low temperature on the contamination sites will also decrease the efficiency of the degradation activity of microbes. On the other hand, extremely slow soil moisture content may limit biodegradation and the effectiveness of bioventing as well. In order to make sure bioventing is effective at the specific contamination sites, the condition of the contamination sites must fulfill the requirement in the screening test of bioventing. In short, not every contamination site is suitable to be bioremediated by using bioventing. Also, bioventing might cause fluctuating of water tables during the extraction. When the air is injected to the soil, it might cause the water table to rise slightly. To, it will transform the unsaturated soil to a saturated soil zone of low air permeability. Low air permeability will reduce the efficiency of bioventing. In addition, bioventing is only effective for light hydrocarbon. It will take longer time to degrade heavier hydrocarbon. The higher the number of carbon in the hydrocarbon, the slower or harder for the microbes to degrade it. Most importantly, before we decided to use bioventing as a method to degrade the pollutant, we have to make sure that there are enough indigenous microbes present in the contamination sites. These microbes are the main characters in bioventing. Imagine that if the contamination site is perfect in other conditions such as temperature, pH, soil moisture, but actually they have no microbes in it. There are like less than thousands colony forming units uh, per gram of microbes, the, of the heterotrophic microbes in the soil. You know, they actually don't want to do the job of biodegrading. 
Hence, biomedicine bio will not be effective as well if there are no micro, not sufficient microbes in the contamination site. That's the reason why we have to do the screening test to make sure that biomedicine is actually suitable for using in the certain contaminated area. All in all, biobending is considered quite a famous in-situ bioremediation method. It uses relatively simpler and easier principles to biodegrade the pollutants. I guess that's all from me now. Bye. And thank you.